Oh, would you look at that? It's another mini PC. I use OEM keys for a few different reasons. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro if you get a retail key. Let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30. No, we can do better. Put in TS25. Click apply. There we go. $23.22. You got Windows 11 Pro and Home. Same with Windows 10 Pro and Home. We now have LTSC versions. This version of Windows 10 will give you security updates until 2032. And it doesn't come with any bloat or AI nonsense. No copilot. No recall. The same for Windows 11. The LTSC. SC editions are volume licenses usually acquired in the same way you would get an OEM key and I made a video on where these keys come from I'll link that below so if you have any qualms about using a volume license key then just grab one of the regular keys I don't they work and so I'm going to grab one and we have two flavors of office if you're sick of paying that monthly subscription well you can get yourself an offline version of office 2019 or office 2016 let's go ahead and check out with our copy of windows 11 pro I right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on view keys and codes. Once you get to the user center, click on get the key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press start, and then type activate. You'll see activation settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here, it says not active. Just click on change product key. Place in our product key and then click on activate. Hey, look at that, active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. This is the B-Link SEI 13 Pro featuring the Intel Core i9-13900K. It's in a very sleek metal case. We'll play a few games, just see how fast it is, and uh, also do some benchmarks. But first, let's go through all these specs, shall we? Right off the bat, there's something that sets this apart from the other mini PCs. It has two things that are integrated that are different. It's got a speaker integrated in the bottom, and it's a downward firing speaker that fires through uh, a sort of a mesh on the bottom. Sounds okay. It sounds better than a lot of laptops, that's for sure. Like a lot better than that. So if you're taking this to your friend's house to play emulators and stuff, and they don't, you know, just plug it up to whatever a portable monitor or something, it's going to sound a lot better than your portable monitor. I mean, it doesn't sound as good as a giant stereo system, but it sounds, you know, about as good as some of those portable speakers. It's hard to, you know, give you a sample through here because whenever I record with this, it's going to be playing through your speakers. So you know. Also, it has an integrated microphone that you can disable. It just shows up, you know, as a regular microphone, but it has a microphone for people who like to talk to their devices. I don't, but maybe you do. You want to talk to whatever AI monstrosity lives on your device? Um, you can do that. Is your computer running L cars? Do you want to just be able to say, computer, L gray T, hot. It'll be like, I don't know what that is, man, but here's some AI slot pictures. I, I make fun of AI. That's what I do for a living nowadays. Anyway, back to the B-Link. You've got the microphone there, so if you want that, it's there. You can talk to it. Cool. Then you got the speakers that can talk back. I don't know. It's it's That's the unique thing. Otherwise, it's just a regular mini PC, so we'll go through that now normally, which is my specialty, normal. So we've got the Intel Core i9-13900HK, 14 cores, 20 threads, up to 5.4 gigahertz, CPU is a beast, 24 megabytes of cache as well. We have a very good cooling system. They call it the MSC 2.0 cooling system, and it's really quiet, like quieter than a lot of the mini PCs that I've tested. So the GPU is the Intel Iris Xe, which is like the higher end of the Iris. We'll do the tests with the gaming in just a minute. Comes with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory at 6,000 megahertz. I guess it would be mega transfers, wouldn't it? Yeah. We also have uh, two M.2 slots, and this one comes with a one terabyte M.2, but it's nice having two PCI Express Gen 4x4 M.2 slots under the hood. The dimensions are 135 by 135 by 44.7, and that's without the little rubber feet on the bottom. It weighs 780 grams, which is about six bananas if you're an American. Wireless network, you got Wi-Fi 5, and we also have Bluetooth 5.2. Looking at the ports on the front, you get your power. You got a little tiny clear CMOS button beside that. Three and a half inch audio jack. It's a combo headphone microphone port. Then we have a USB-C that's 10 gigabits per second. Then we have USB 3.2 that's type A, 10 gigabits per second there as well. Flipping it around to the back. Well, we've got two USB 3.2 ports right there. They look like USB 2. They're not fancy. 10 gigabits per second. Beside that, we have 2.5 gigabit LAN, and that is an Intel. Then we have DisplayPort 1.4, 4K, 144 hertz right there. Below that, we have one USB 2.0, which is 480 megabits per second, if you've forgotten. Plenty good for peripherals and whatnot. We have an audio jack on the back. I love audio jacks on the back because whenever I use these as like an entertainment center or whatever, I don't like using the HDMI audio for many different reasons. Some people, whatever, but it's nice to be able to have that plug in the back. Speaking of HDMI, we do have HDMI 4K 60 hertz right there as well. And a USB-C that is 10 gigabits per second, and that will do data and also video. 
It's a display port. So you can have three displays at the same time, one with the USB-C, one with the HDMI, one with the display port. And for the people in the community, especially the Linux community, it's the Intel Ethernet controller i226V. And if you just want to know some other stuff, I'll thumb through a few things for you. There's the Intel Wi-Fi AX200. Ye old Iris XE. All right, let's get it naked, shall we? Let's take that, take off the bottom there, and you can see under the hood, um, there's that speaker. Cool that it has this, so. And then you can see we've got our spot there where you can mount another M.2. There's already one in there, and we have a little thermal pad uh, right above that M.2. And to make room for that speaker and everything else, the RAM is not easily accessible. So if you're okay with just 32 gigabytes of RAM and you don't want to upgrade, you're good to go. I think I'm okay with that. But if you want to upgrade that RAM, you're going to have to get out more screwdrivers. You'll have one screwdriver in each hand going crazy, taking stuff apart. So, all right, let's hop in and do some tests and just see how fast this is. I haven't been drinking. I'm just slur. I don't know why. Let's check out Superposition. Now, this taxes the GPU and the CPU, and it's a bit much for this system, as you can see here. 1937 is the score. The average is 14.49 FPS, minimum 12.13. This is run at 1080p on the medium setting, so this is not going to be a system for crazy AAA gaming or anything. Let's take a look at Unigen Valley running at 1080p. See, we got an average of 35.6, score 1490, minimum 21.4. So, kind of in the mid ranges here, we can play indie games, I think. Let's try some. All right, we're trying out some games here. This is Planet of Lana running at 1080p. I think it looks really pretty. Actually, looks really, really pretty. This is a game that's kind of like Another World, or if you played Flashback way back in the day, if you want to know some modern stuff, maybe Limbo or more like Inside. But I thought this was a great little adventure puzzle game. You've got this little critter behind you that you can command to do things to help you along. You know, like if there's a button that requires two people to press or somewhere that you can't reach, you know, you can command the critter and it'll go and do things. Right now I'm just running through a little area to show you what the game looks like, but games like this, indie games and whatnot, will run amazingly well on this. That thing over there, that means business. You know what? You can even make video games on this machine. And we now have Action Game Maker from Gotcha Gotcha Games, they're the people who make all the Maker series. So this is their newest engine, and it's actually based on Godot. So they've taken Godot because it's MIT license and they've added visual scripting and a bunch of their own stuff on top of Godot. And they've set this up in a way that whenever Godot gets an update, they'll also get the update. So you're not gonna be falling behind. Godot lacks visual scripting. So this is a pretty big deal, especially if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of programming knowledge. They already have all kinds of states built in and you can add your own. So I think this makes it way easier for most people. Now it's still Godot, it's not gonna be like, you know, you push button, generate game. That's not the way this works, but you can make games on this. I did ask a couple questions because I figured everybody else would want to know out there. I asked how they were contributing to Godot. Uh, they're not giving any profit to Godot. So that makes me feel a little bit weird. I wish they would be giving like five or six percent. That would be awesome because it would greatly help Godot. But I don't want to call this a parasitic relationship because they're going to be bringing a lot of people over to Godot. Now, I know that's just by default of them using a free engine for their for-profit thing, but they are going to be raising a lot of awareness, bringing a lot of people over, especially in Japan where Godot has not like really caught on yet. This could be a very good thing for Godot. And when I start you know, messing around with some action games, I'm going to look to this before I look to Godot because visual scripting. It's very handy, and if it can make things move faster, especially for someone like me who would rather focus on music and art and not so much on coding, then I'll be using this. I also asked if they're gonna be putting this onto the Godot Asset Store as a, just a separate plugin for the visual scripting. Their stuff uses a different format than Vanilla Godot. They've done a lot of modifications, so they're not sure if they're gonna be able to do that or not, but they are looking into it because we do now have a Godot Asset Store. Anyway, I just wanted to show you this with the fancy visual scripting and everything. It's cool. You can run it right here on this machine. So if you want to get into game dev and, you know, get into it seriously and want something that's slightly easier than regular Godot, then try Action Game Maker. So I'll put a link to this down in the description. Thanks to them for sending over a key. Yeah, let's see what else we can do with this system. All right, let's see what else we can do here. We got the Midnight Walk. Let's load that up and see how it runs. Well, these Intels, they just don't have any graphical power. So yeah, this is going to look a little bit dark, but See, look how pretty this is. Plays way better on similarly priced AMD hardware generally. So I guess if you care about 3D gaming, this is a modern Unreal Engine game, but runs way better than most Unreal Engine games. Yeah, you cannot play the Midnight Walk. So as far as editing goes, CPU should have enough horsepower so that it doesn't really matter. Let's just uh, see how it runs. We'll go ahead and do a cut or something. There we go. Just random cut there. 
and we'll do a cross dissolve, make it bigger. I hate this new interface on the latest Premiere, but whatever. I'm gonna run this at full 4K. Yes, there we go. Run everything at full, scrub around. All right, since our hard drive's fast and everything else, it should be fine. Let's go ahead and try this cross dissolve. Pretty smooth. We'll give it like a seven out of 10. It's okay. You can definitely edit on this. Let's take a look at Cinebench, and you can see there that 13900 HK is still very fast. There's a couple previous generation CPU cores. Look at that, almost twice as fast as the 7700K. So this one does not mess around when it comes to single core performance, but this is 14 cores, 20 threads. You know, that's one of those big cores right there, flexing for the single core. Let's take a look at the multi-core. Single core, 2034, multi-core, 15338. Let's check out Geekbench. Our single core score is 2489 and the multi-core 7496. Scroll down here, see all the information and here are all the individual tests. Just pause it if there's something there you need to see. And then over here, 13291 is our OpenCL score. That's for our Intel XE, our Iris XE graphics. Right there it is. Scroll on down here and you can see those individual scores. All right, let's check the temperature. It's been running for 24 minutes right now, and we've maxed out at around 81 degrees. I noticed it was still going up a little bit around the 15 minute mark. It was at 79, but after 24 minutes, it's now up to 81, but it generally stays around 72, so not too bad there. This is how loud it is at my desk right now, 43.4 decibels. I'm gonna put it about a foot away or so from the machine that's benchmarking, and we'll just see how loud it is. All right, so we got 47.1. You can definitely hear it, but it's not that loud and it doesn't have any high-pitched weird sounds or anything. It just, you know, sounds like a fan. So we're gonna call this relatively quiet. Let's see how fast the M.2 is. Let this run and we'll also check the temperatures over here. So I'm actually running this test for the second time because uh, yeah, this didn't get too hot. It didn't even get over 40. So I thought maybe it wasn't reading the temperature right. So now I'm trying crystal disk info, but it seems to be running below 40 like 39 was the max we'll just see if that holds up this time really cool i i mean like if this was idling at this i would be just fine as far as the speed goes pci express gen 4 standard speeds right here 50 79 79 on the read and you can see the right there 46 12 05 iops let you take a look right there 197,753. so pretty good looking there so there you have it i forgot what i said but i recorded i'm recording this after i said that but i've just done so many videos whatever i said during the testing that's the verdict <laughs> yes all right i hope you enjoyed all this stuff this is what's going on over at bigpants.com I need to stop talking. It's time to take a break. But yeah, you can head over here to epicpants.com. The hardware is half price right now. But check this out. Oh, the coupon code is Happy Hardware. It'll show up at the checkout. So half of, of whatever you see here. F off like my pants are. Check this out. I found a couple copies of Windows 98. There they are. So I decided to throw those up there for sale. These are sealed and they got the CompUSA sticker right there. These are from uh, before even when I was working at CompUSA. All right, so let me know what you think. See you in the comments. Bye.